Hey guys, welcome back to the um, buzzer rock, and here I am bringing you another Hero Factory Racer. <coughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, the first one I brought you is Pulse 2.0 and the World Cage. I did build another one. I built Amp 2.0 and the Red Baron. But that was during my hiatus on videos, so if you want to see that one, you'll have to go to my DeviantArt account where I have a picture. The picture's not too good, but it, I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan of that one. Uh, of course, Pulse 2.0 and the World Cage was very awesome. It was epic. And uh, sadly, that one was just so cool. It was abnormally cool, it was just like a fluke. So I, you guys should not be expecting anything that cool coming from the Hero Factory Racers. My Hero Factory Racers again, just because that one was abnormally cool. But this one's still cool. Uh, I call this one, um, Anode 2.0 and the Twisted Cradle. Uh, Anode, I'm not, I'm not sure about that name actually. I've, I'm trying to come up with an electrical name because he's supposed to be electrical powered. But, uh, I'm not sure about that name yet. So, let's just put that name for now. Maybe I'll change it later in the title. Whatever it says in the title, hopefully, is the name. But the Twisted Cradle comes from the functionality of this vehicle. Because <coughs> the, motor, the front two wheels are like a motorcycle. The um, outer wheels are like a car. The idea is that the motorcycle part is cradled inside the car because the motorcycle part moves independently. Of the actual vehicle. So if I'll just take um, anode out of here, <coughs> and let me just move the focus back to the vehicle. So as you can see here, it's it moves the the motorcycle part moves independently of the vehicle. So this is like the cradle, and this is being suspended from it. Uh, and it also has steering and everything, which is stiff enough so that it can drive forward, kind of. And this part moves independently. It tends to kind of knock up these skirts at the back, but that's fine. So I, I guess I'll just kind of turn this around so you guys can see it. It has some exhaust pipes back there, which are the exact same color as the actual vehicle. And in case you're wondering, it does technically have a pullback motor. But because of the very complex gearing I gave it, which I'll show you what that does in a second, it is best not to use it, and plus it's like a 10 year old pullback motor back when I got Lego as a kid, so uh, it's not it's not that, it's not that probably going to work that well. Actually, I saw the new 2013 tech, Lego Technic sets, and two of the smaller ones come with pullback motors, so I'll be sure to get those so I can make more Hero Factory racers. But basically what this does is this has a differential through the axle. What that does is that's what real cars have. Uh, like when you see an RC car, usually the lower end ones just have an axle running across the wheels. So when you're driving and you're turning, even though the outer wheels have to go more distance than the inner wheels, because they're traveling more distance around a curve, it, the wheels, they can't, uh, they have to move at the exact same speed because they're on the same axle. So that leads to scraping on the rubber. However, on real cars, they have something called a differential, which allows the wheels to spin at different speeds from each other. So, if you'll notice here, as it's turning, the outer wheel is turning faster than the inner wheel, which is very cool, very awesome. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but... And that's, the gearing allows for that, whereas a normal axle wouldn't. That's what this thing up here is, the differential. And I got that from the Unimog that I got a while ago. And it's kind of an okay, it's kind of an okay, it's not very exciting, but it's... I think I still like it, basically. And these handlebars fold in if you want me to do that. So, um, basically, when I want to pull back the motor, I don't actually pull it back just because there's too many universal joints and the differential and stuff. Uh, so when I do that, I just kind of crank this gear. Uh, if I crank it the right way, it kind of goes, but you kind of have to give it a push. Let's see, actually, I'm not even just going to put it on the ground. I'm just going to... Something interesting about the differential is that it moves both wheels from one direction. As provided that the wheels have the exact same amount of friction, but this one has a little more friction, evidently. 
but both wheels are moving, as you can see, and if you're on a turn, they'll move at different speeds. So that's that's how cars work. Kind of an interesting thing. It has a little tail light there, and uh, I'm I'm not even going to bother to show off the the uh, pullback motor. I don't know if I showed it to you guys in the Pulse 2.0 and the roll cage review. The pullback motor, that one was actually hooked up directly to the wheels, so that even that one didn't work too well, just because the motor's really old, but. This one, it's going through a bunch of gearing, so it does not work. Let me just tell you that. But I put it in there just because that's what the that's what the racers are supposed to have. Now, as you can see, uh, anode here, pretty simple. I originally had this thing turned around, so it looked kind of like a welder's mask because you know he's an electrical guy. But I like it better this way. I think it, a lot of people didn't like that Ferno thing, but I liked it. It's fine. And there's around the back. Fairly plain and simple. So there they are. Pulse no, sorry. Anode 2.0 and the twisted cradle. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, uh, review of another one of my Hero Factory racers. I'll see you guys later. Bye.